And it's frozen. There we go. Goodness. Okay. So thank you very much, Tatiana. That was great. Um, up next, we have uh, Reto Trinkler. He's the chairman and CTO of Melonport. Um, Reto is a blockchain developer with background in uh, mathematics, mathematics from ETH Zurich. Um, and he's also the host of Zurich's Blockchain Hack Lab. Um, he's developed a profitable trading algorithm for sport betting exchanges in C++ as well. Please join me in welcoming him. Hi. Um, first of all, thanks very much for the, the invite. Um, it's, it's a huge honor to be here. Um, great. So I'm going to talk today a bit about Melonport. Um, so we're building uh, blockchain software for asset management. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about the premise of blockchain technology, what we are building, um, some of our fundamental beliefs, and our vision. So um, to put in context what we are building, um, I always try to, to do some analogies. Um, so if you look at the Bitcoin blockchain, we essentially um, we see a distributed database. Um, if you look at Ethereum, we see a distributed computer um, where smart contracts on this computer can be seen as software running on this computer. Um, and what we're doing now at Mellonport is essentially we're building software uh, for asset management running on this computer. Um, another way to put it is um, if you look at the, the Bitcoin protocol, then essentially we see a, a protocol for accounting. Um, enforces some basic rules of um, yeah, double entry accounting. Um, if you look at the Ethereum protocol, we see um, a protocol that enforces some basic rules of some Turing complete uh, machine. Um, and what we're building now at Mellon is we're building a protocol that enforces some basic rules of asset management. So essentially what, what Satoshi did for accounting, we're now doing for asset management. Um, so what we are building, um, the, the Mellon protocol allows you to set up a decentralized fund, a decentralized hedge fund. Um, where you can manage your fund within uh, pre-specified fund uh, param parameters. Um, you can build your track record on the blockchain. You can invest in others or have others invest in you. Um, some of the value proposition of this is it's, it's open and transparent. So all our code is open source. Um, all, all the trades happens on the blockchain. And that gives the, the corresponding transparency. Um, it lowers cost and time. So, so if you want to set up a hedge fund right now, it probably it can cost you millions and it, it, it can take months. So it's a huge headache. Um, with our technology, it takes you about 10 to 19 seconds and costs you about 30 cents. Um, so the way we design it is it's very modular and inclusive. I'm going to touch upon this later. And it's decentralized and thus comes with certain reliability. Um, yeah, improvements in auditability, like there's, there's almost no rooms for cooking the books. Yes, that's actually a problem with traditional hedge funds. Um, you know, mar marketing is essentially how marketing should be. Like you, your performance is calculated on the blockchain. And that's how you market your fund. Like you, 
you know, the, you're measured where it really counts, and that's your performance. Um, so no more shiny, whatever, fund perspectives, or, li or like these, uh, you know, fund uh, brochures. It, it really boils down to what really is relevant. Um, yeah, you, you don't necessarily need office space. Uh, operational costs are tremendously reduced. Um, information is on the blockchain. It uses modern technology um, and can, has, uh, can have uh, benefits in regulatory aspects as well. Um, yeah, so we're, we're building an ecosystem and that's very similar to, to how almost any blockchain builds an ecosystem. So it's always, you know, there's always some key players in, in a blockchain ecosystem. Usually it's the miners. Um, the miners make the miners make everything secure, and thus you have to incentivize them appropriately. Uh, the way it's, the way this is done is through inflation. So you have you have Bitcoin, which is I inflates, um, it inflates itself, and the amount is given to the miners. The miners make the network secure again. Um, yeah, and so on. With proof of uh, stake blockchain, it's very similar. Similar so. So you have people putting up money um, to make the network secure, but you have to incentivize them appropriately. Um, for us, it's um, we, we give money to developers because that's where we see is, is the, the largest need. Um, yeah. So essentially, the, the way we are building this is like we have a core and we have modules. In the core is kind of what we believe is universally agreed upon. So, for example, with the accounting in, in Bitcoin, I guess, yeah, some double entry accounting that's kind of universally agreed upon. Um, the same with Ethereum, like if you have one um, definition of a state of Turing complete machine, then that's kind of universally agreed upon. It's the same for us, like, for example, how we calculate the share price, how we can invest, redeem. Uh, we believe this is, this is universally agreed upon, and everything else we, we outsource in modules. Uh, for example, price feeds, exchanges, the assets you can trade in, um, and so on. And so kind of um, everybody can build those modules, and we already have some, some great, great companies that build great modules. Um, I believe we have currently the best oracle in Ethereum um, with, with uh, the native proofs of oracles. Um Yeah, easy to use. Um, this is how the interface looks like. Uh, you can see this at portal.malamport.com. Um, yeah, some of our fundamental beliefs. Like when we started, like, okay, I, sh I probably should mention, like, this only works for Ethereum assets, so it's only on Ethereum. And when we started, I like the question that always came up, like, in what can you trade in? And and we had the firm belief that, you know, give us some time, it will come. And now it's, it's really like there are so many assets um, that, that it really becomes apparent that in, in a couple of years, you can have more assets in one of those funds than you can have in, in a traditional fund. For example, you can hold art, you can hold music, you can hold, um, um, you know, copyrights. It's, it's really, you, you can have, yeah, we, we believe you will have more options than in traditional funds. Um, uh, so much so that we believe that crypto will be its own assets class. Um, and that's, yeah, and for now, it, it, you know, it, there might not be consensus on whether or not this is true, but kind of if, if we put it in a historical context, there always have been kind of these, these asset classes that were deemed uninvestable. Uh, like, for example, the junk bonds, ETFs, commodities, EM. And there was always, like, one person that <laughs> kind of saw the opportunity and, you know, brought it into mainstream. Um, so we're not sure who, who this person will be in crypto, but we're, we believe that whoever it is, he will be using Melon. Um, yeah. So the current users of crypto... We have some great companies that um, uh, that will be using Melon from the start, but really, like everyone can use it. So if you have an internet connection, if you have 30 cents, 
you can make your own hedge fund. Yeah, and so the, the vision is like, uh, if you succeed, then you can apply this structure to traditional fund management as well. And yeah, as you know, in a business school, uh, it's quite a big market. Yeah. Thanks very much. That's a good question. So essentially, we, we're. Uh, yeah, sure. So the, the, the question essentially was how, how we tackle the regulatory aspect of it. Um, so essentially, we're just a technology provider. Like, we, we're not operating funds ourselves. We're just building infrastructure for other people to, um, to do their funds. So, yeah, I think we as a company are pretty safe. Um, but ultimately, like, we, we believe that there will be a jurisdiction that will open up to these kinds of funds. And whichever jurisdiction it will be, will make a lot of money out of it. Um, so, yeah. How long has your product been live and how many transactions a day do you have? Or how much assets are being, how much assets have been invested in current clients? Yeah, so we haven't been live yet. It's still, um, we, we give ourselves two years to build this, um, and the reason for it is, like, you, you might remember the DAO, like, the, those kinds of things where, where there is a potential to, you know, have a lot of money invested in, they need to be very secure, and, and we give ourselves two years of, like, this really slow, secure rollout process. Yes. Um, no, we, we, we haven't released it yet. Um, so, so you can play a bit with the prototype, but it still needs some work. Um, sure. Um, not really. I mean, with blockchain technology, it's kind of it, it's a question where is the jurisdiction? Like, there, I've I've heard a legal firm argue that they can kind of put a jurisdiction on it, like the jurisdiction is where they deploy. But then again, it's like hosted around the world. It's like blockchain technology. It's you can't really control where it's hosted or where it's operated. So it's. I personally wouldn't say so. Um, I, I would say so a hedge fund is, is just um, uh, a set of assets that you trade in. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily a jurisdiction. Um, so, so, so essentially, this, 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 this burden falls upon the user. Like it's, the, the user has to do due do, do diligence. Like we can't, it's, it's the same way with a, with a telephone company. Like you, you, cannot, you cannot prevent people doing bad things over the telephone, but that's, that's no reason to shut down the telephone company. Like you also can do a lot of good. Okay, so thanks very much. So we're going to go ahead and break now. So um, the breakout rooms will have um, the speakers you've just heard and also a few others that you haven't heard from. So please go check them out. Um, there's one on capital projects and different topics. Um, they are in rooms 214, 216, 312, and 314. We'll meet back here at 3, oh, let's say 330 for our next speaker, Reinser. Thank you.